Ever since its debut way back in 2003, America's Next Top Model has been cranking out the stunners. But while some stars of the series seemed to walk the runway into oblivion, for these models, the show was just the launch pad for their successful careers. Ebony Davis was a working model before landing fifth place on Cycle 18. She claimed that, unlike the first-time models, her industry prowess would set her up for post-show success, telling Seattle Met, they don't see that the experience of the show isn't correlated to the real world of fashion modeling. I was modeling before the show. I already had a career before I went on the show." Davis went on to work for brands like Calvin Klein and Victoria's Secret, and she's also used her platform to advocate for diversity within the industry. She wrote in a letter for Harper's Bazaar in 2016, "...as artists in the fashion industry, we are the embodiment of free speech. We set the tone for society through the stories we tell." As people working in the industry, we have to speak to the self-esteem and the self-worth of the people who are looking up to us." But not everyone worked years in the craft before they made their mark. Cycle 12's Natalie Pack was crowned Miss California USA in 2012 without having any previous pageant experience, and later went on to land multiple high-profile gigs with guests. That campaign was, I don't know if anything will ever top it. But while she's been hustling since the show, Pack revealed in 2018 that it hadn't always been an easy experience. In documents obtained by TMZ, the model claimed she worked 48 jobs for guests from 2015 to 2018 but said that the company hadn't paid her within 30 days, which is required by law. Fortunately, Pack seems to have a solid support system. The model married actor Aaron O'Connell in 2018, telling Galealahav.com, "...when Aaron and I are home together, we love spending time with our four-year-old dog, Fig, who fills our days with outdoor adventures like hiking and days at the beach. Then, of course, there's Cycle 20's Don Benjamin, who might not have been crowned the winner of Guys and Girls, but who definitely made an impact on fans with his tattoos and piercing green eyes. He admitted to Inks that he didn't expect much to come from his top model audition, revealing, "...at that moment, I was pursuing music heavily. I didn't have much going on, so I figured I would give it a try, not realizing it would be the break I needed." I'm keeping my hip-hop car. Sorry." Everything changed for the model once he hit TV screens across America. Other than starring as the love interest in Ariana Grande's music video for Into You, Don revealed that his most exciting gig since the show has been a campaign for guests. He told Hunger magazine, "...a few years ago, I was without a job, looking for work, and applied at guests, and didn't get the job. Fast forward to today, and I'm one of their main male models." But I didn't go in wanting to win. I went in wanting to get third. Everyone remembers the third person. Another model got her big break from the series as well. Cycle 7's third place stunner, Eugenia Washington, wasted no time in making her next move, appearing in the music video for B.O.B. and Bruno Mars's hit single, Nothing on You. She played it relatively low key until 2015, when she was tapped as Playboy's December Playmate of the Month, only to land Playmate of the Year in 2016. According to E! News, Washington was only the third black woman ever to hold the highly coveted title. I feel great. I'm just taking it all in and I'm super duper excited." But Washington isn't the only top model alum to crush it in the industry. Cycle 14 favorite Raina Hine may have landed in the runner-up spot to Krista White, but she went on to find success modeling for numerous campaigns, commercials, music videos, and runways. Hine explained to FCM Style in 2014, I was just in Barcelona for a week shooting a campaign and was in Monaco and London two weeks ago for a meeting with a magazine. I've accomplished so much. I've experienced so much. I've learned an incredible amount. I've become a model, and it doesn't stop here." But these days, Hine may be focusing her talents elsewhere. With just one look at her Instagram, it's obvious that she's quite the devoted mom to her growing family. In 2019, she and her husband, Rhett Ellison, welcomed baby number two into the bunch, and the foursome looks happier than ever. Cycle 5's Lisa D'Amato was known for stirring up the drama. I think slowly but surely, I think I'm becoming more of a threat to the other girls. And in 2011, she went on to win the All-Star Cycle. Since her time on the show, D'Amato has kept herself busy doing even more reality TV. In 2010, she checked into celebrity rehab with Dr. Drew, and two years later, she starred in her own pilot titled My Name is Lisa. In 2016, D'Amato and her husband, Hollywood entrepreneur Adam Friedman, appeared on WeTV's marriage boot camp, Reality Stars. She landed a deal on Shark Tank for her food storage bib, There You Go. But D'Amato's true passion lies in making music. In 2009, she released her debut album, La Puccinetta, which she followed up with Flippin' the Bird. Yaya DaCosta may have been the runner-up on Cycle 3, but her career post-show has been nothing short of incredible. Two years after Top Model, she made her feature film debut in 2006's Take the Lead and has had recurring roles on Chicago Med, All My Children, and Ugly Betty, along with a starring role in 2015's Whitney. 
DaCosta has also been outspoken about representation in the industry. The Afro-Latina actress told The Griot in 2019, It's nice that people are actually realizing what Latin America actually looks like. But she acknowledged that the work needs to happen everywhere in the industry. There have to be writers and producers and directors hiring um, and insisting on that representation. Cycle 5's Cassandra Jean Whitehead famously dropped out of the series after she received a hair makeover she didn't like. It was the last straw in them completely trying to change who I was. Whitehead grew her hair back and then went to work in TV, where she had several small screen appearances in One Tree Hill, Mad Men, and Arrow. But where the former model really lucked out, though, is in love. In December 2012, she married Arrow star Stephen Amell, and the couple welcomed their first child that October. Danny Evans was the winner of Cycle 6, narrowly beating out Joni Dodds. After her time on the show, Evans walked the runway for several big names in fashion, and she's been featured in ad campaigns for CoverGirl, Academics, and Sephora. In 2013, Evans became a published author with her book The Skinny on Getting In, an inside peek into the fashion world for the aspiring model. The book acted as both a memoir as well as something of a how-to for young models trying to break into the industry. In 2016, she told Sports Illustrated that her inspiration came from the response she received after her top model win, from fans curious about how to break into modeling. She offered, Staying confidence and knowing how to dress, and this business is key. Eva Marcel launched her modeling career by winning Cycle 3. After the show, Marcel hit the small screen with roles in Smallville, The Young and the Restless, House of Pain, and Real Husbands of Hollywood. But it wasn't until 2018 that she fully embraced the housewife's life by signing on to The Real Housewives of Atlanta. So thank you, excuse me, and good day. But the model and actress wasn't only interested in making a living on camera, and in 2018, she launched her home design collection. I'm just trying to dabble in other things, but more so things that are real for me. Marcel told People Magazine, my goal is to give women an oasis with warm patterns and comfortable fabrics for an easy getaway from life. Enhancing your living space is therapeutic, and our prints make for a calming environment. Hi, I'm the fabulous Takara. I'm a plus-size supermodel of the world. Takara Jones didn't make it terribly far into her season of top model, but that doesn't mean she didn't have a lasting impression. After Cycle 3, Jones appeared on TV in Are We There Yet, In The Cut, and Celebrity Paranormal Project. But the model, who had her fair share of ups and downs in an effort to prove herself as more than just plus-size, has gone on to do just that. In 2008, she appeared in the all-black issue of Vogue Italia. Photographer Stephen Mizell said of her via The New York Times, I wanted to say something about weight, and I'm never allowed to do that. I met Takara and thought, she's beautiful, what's the deal with her? The following year, Jones appeared in the BET's Rip the Runway fashion show, and she's since gone on to design her own intimate apparel line. Now DeMarco was the first deaf model to win America's Next Top Model during Cycle 22. But he claimed that being deaf actually worked to his advantage, saying, Being deaf has definitely been a strength for me in this competition, just because American Sign Language requires a lot of facial expression and using your body, and that's what modeling requires also. In 2019, DeMarco had been tapped for a role on the Grey's Anatomy spinoff Station 19 as a deaf firefighter. But DeMarco's acting career is only a small portion of what he's been up to these days. On top of spearheading the Nile DeMarco Foundation, which works to quote, improve the lives of every deaf person in the world, he's also started a production company specifically focused on deaf filmmakers. Telling L'Officiel in 2019, I think Hollywood is finally listening and becoming more aware of the extreme lack of representation, but there is a lot of work still to do. Although she was initially reluctant to audition for the show, Cycle 11's Isis King took a chance after doing background work the previous season. She told Johnny McGovern on Hey Queen that before she had gotten encouragement from some of the other girls, she was thinking, I didn't want to go on originally. I was like, I don't know if they're just trying to use me or what. The time she spent on ANTM proved to be meaningful for both King and the larger LGBTQ community. The first ever trans model to appear on the show has gone on to become a prominent voice for trans rights. She serves on the board of the Ali Fournay Center, an organization dedicated to helping homeless LGBTQ youth. Leela Goldcool's appearance on Cycle 19 had its ups and downs. After being eliminated during the fifth week, Goldcool wound up winning a second chance to be in the competition via a social media vote. Once back on the show, she nearly won the season, landing in third place. After the show, Gold Cool went on to work in high fashion. In 2016, she made her runway debut at Givenchy Spring Show in New York City. And a year later, Gold Cool walked in Fashion Week for Chanel, Nina Ricci, and Tom Ford. By 2018, she was recognized as one of the 50 greatest models in the world. Pretty impressive. I'm like this big, like, whirlwind, I guess, because one day nothing could be happening, and the next day something massive is happening. Even though Brie Scalark made it to third place on Cycle 5, she wound up being remembered more for her feud with that season's winner, Nicole Linkletter, than for anything else. Luckily, Scalark would bounce back from Granola Gate, shifting from a modeling career to a life focused on balance and community. But it took some hard hits to get there. 
In an interview with Office Magazine, Skolark recounted the period after the show ended, during which she went from making $200,000 on one particular day to being dropped by her agencies after a bad haircut. Our drug use led to a stint in rehab, after which the model discovered yoga. Noticing a lack of yoga studios in urban areas, Skolar took it upon herself to set up her own sliding scale community classes. Eventually, she began teaching in prisons, something she said is more fulfilling than her previous work. I love yoga. I'm born and raised in Harlem, and I felt like I needed to make a contribution to my community. It needed to be an action, and I needed to do it outside of that spotlight. She told the outlet, I feel healed and needed. I always felt disposable modeling. There was no real need for me. Psycho 5's Kim Stoltz has the distinction of being the show's first out lesbian finalist not to mention one of its most outspoken stars. I love having people, like, watch me. In a 2005 interview with The Village Voice, she vented her frustration with the judge's criticism to appear, quote, more feminine in her shoot, saying, At some point I said, F it, I'll be myself, and to hell with what they think because they're being too confusing. But beyond her experience on the show, Stoltz has published a book, been an MTV reporter, and also worked on Wall Street. In 2014, Bloomberg announced that the former model had been hired as a director for equity derivative sales for Bank of America. And according to her LinkedIn, Stoltz later became the head of America's prime brokerage sales for the company. Although she wasn't one of the more well-liked contestants on the show at the time of her elimination, Cycle 10's Fatima Saeed claimed the fights between her and the other girls were dramatized for TV. To me, most of the girls are cool, but I don't think they understand how stupid they act sometimes. In 2011, Saeed accomplished a top model first by landing spots on runways for Dries Van Noten and Hermes, according to The Cut. The transition into high fashion came after a three-year stint of commercial and print work. She later graced the pages of Nylon magazine and was one of the faces of Urban Decay's fall-winter 2016 ad campaign. So what's her best advice for aspiring models? She told The New York Magazine, Now that I work as a professional model, I advise people to stay away from any television shows. It's a waste of your time. It's just entertainment. It's not the fashion that we now know. Winnie Harlow was actually discovered by Tyra Banks via Instagram. I found you. Really? I saw you on social media. I've actually never seen vitiligo that way. Yeah, neither have I. It's like symmetrical, like, fantasticness. Harlow became the first Canadian, as well as the first model with the skin condition vitiligo, to compete on the show. Initially eliminated in the fourth week, Harlow returned after she won the show's comeback series and wound up taking sixth place overall. Harlow has been incredibly outspoken in her experience with vitiligo. In a 2019 interview on The Jonathan Ross Show, Harlow took aim at the news outlets that referred to her skin condition as something she was, quote, suffering from. She said, I feel like it's not anyone else's position to tell me I am suffering. I don't feel like I am suffering. I am conquering. I am living. I am living my best life in the way that I can and thriving. I think I was born with confidence. It was really just something that I lost when um, people made me feel like I shouldn't be confident. Certainly, her stunning look has become an incredible asset for the model who's worked for Moschino and Julian McDonald, as well as walked the 2018 Victoria's Secret runway. 